In our previous videos, we have received a feed of JSON plant data. We've parsed that data and we've saved it into a database. In this series of videos, we are going to explore how to retrieve that data from the database. And also we're going to explain a little bit about a try-catch block and how we can use a try-catch block to toggle between online and offline without our user seeing it. So optimize the performance without any interaction required from the user. First, you see we have this plant DAO fetch plants, and that is fetching plants from an online data source. Now, plant DAO is a variable of type iPlantDAO, and the idea is that iPlantDAO contains all the methods that both an online and an offline DAO would need. The trick is that there is one that we, there's, there are probably a couple methods that we have not implemented in the offline DAO. And if you take a look here, one of them is the fetch plants method, and that's one that we need to implement. So that's the goal of our video today. Once we've implemented this method, we'll be able to operate better offline because we can call our offline database uh, when we're not connected to the network. So first, let's start by putting together a SQL string. Now, this is interesting because search term, we haven't specified what the search term is, but we know that genus, species, cultivar, and common are all English-like words that can be searched. So we need a way to search across all of them. So first, I'm going to say string SQL equals, and then we'll say select star from, which is fairly standard in SQL. And then the name of our table is plants, so I'll use the constant plants. Note that I'm being careful to leave a space on either side of plants. Uh, and now what I'll do, I'll tell you what, we'll go ahead and terminate that with a semicolon. I'm going to say string where. I'll make the where clause a separate string because this one's going to be a little bit more complicated. Uh, we want to search across any of these columns, genus, species, cultivar, and common. And we want to be able to search within a word, so we don't necessarily need an exact match. This is going to require several different constructs in SQL. It's going to require a like with a wildcard and also the or statement. So where, I'm going to say where, uh, and now I'm going to start using constants. I'm going to say genus, okay? And it's going to get a little bit tricky here. Like, and then single quote, and then uh, percent symbol. In SQL, the percent symbol is a wildcard, and the single quote indicates a string. Now, no space between the uh, percent symbol and the double quote, and we'll simply say search term plus double quote, and then again percent, and then again single quote. So where genus like single quote percent search term percent single quote, that's saying um, where the genus has the search term anywhere in its word. Uh, it doesn't have to be an exact match. If we if the search term were an E it would be any genus that contains that letter E. So it's kind of like a contains search. Now we're going to say or, and then we're going to use our constant for species. Note there is a space between the or and the double quote. And then double quote, and then like. And once again, we'll follow the same pattern of single quote, percent, and then plus search term, plus double quote, percent single quote, be careful of that order, or, and then we'll say again cultivar, and then double uh, plus double quote, and then uh, like single quote percent double quote plus uh, search term, plus double quote percent single quote, or co uh, common, like, whoops, like, single quote, percent, double quote, plus, search term, plus, double quote, percent, single quote, and terminate with a semicolon. Certainly you don't need to make a query that, that, that is this complicated, but I like this query because instead of having genus, species, cultivar, and common on a search screen, we simply have one blank that says, what are you looking for? And then it will return to us um, 
any plant that has the search term in any of these columns. For example, if I go to plantplaces.com, search plants by name, any enter, enter any part of the name you want to find. I can type in Circus and notice that it's going to autocomplete with Circus canadensis and eastern redbud. If I say canadensis, we're going to get several different plants where the species is canadensis, and among them is going to be Circus canadensis. If I say redbud, we're going to end up again with Circus canadensis eastern redbud. So Circus is the genus, canadensis is the species, and redbud is the common name. No matter what I put in, it's going to search across all of those fields. Now, you see this is one search bar with a search button. That's it. Very simple. Compare that to the traditional approach where we have a screen like this with a separate field for genus, species, cultivar, and common. It's a lot simpler if we can combine those into one. And we know that in Android we want to save time by... Um, or we want to save space by only putting widgets that are very important on the screen. Okay, so finally, uh, we have our SQL and our WHERE clause, um, and what we need to do now is we need to actually run this query. Uh, I will go ahead and put that in a separate method. We'll just call it, uh, okay, we'll say uh, inner select. And then we'll say we'll pass in SQL plus WHERE, so the combination of, uh, of, of the SQL statement and the WHERE statement. I probably should have called that the SELECT statement, but oh well. I haven't made this method yet, so I'm going to go ahead and create the method inner select. And here, we'll make the string SQL. We'll make that the uh, argument that we're passing in. And here in this inner select is where we're actually going to run the SQL statement, and we're going to get back result. So first, a little bit of housekeeping. Let's change the return, ty return type to a list of plants, uh, plant DTOs. Whoops, sorry. And then I can do a little housekeeping up above. I can simply say return inner select, like so. Okay. And now I need to declare my return type, or return variable rather. So I'll say list plant DTO. All plants equals new uh, array list plant DTO. Okay. Alt enter. And import class. And now, as we've seen before, we need to set up our cursor. Cursor, uh, cursor equals uh, get readable database. Dot raw query, and we'll simply say our SQL string and then null for parameters. We've already handled the parameters. We could have done a cute job and handled the parameters in here, but nonetheless, I think we're good. Uh, and I'm going to say if cursor.getCount is greater than zero, open curly, close curly. Let's not forget to close the cursor. I always forget that part. So after this if test, cursor.close and return all plants to take care of our red line. And with that out of the way now, we can worry about what's inside this if test. So I'm going to say cursor dot move to first. Whoops. And then I'm going to say while cursor exclamation cursor is after last. I've done this before in a previous video on Android Studio, so I'm not explaining every step. If you wish to see what each of these steps means, simply look in my uh, Android Studio playlist for the video where we uh, introduce this concept. Okay, uh, now what I'm going to do is make a new plant object, a plant DTO, and it's important to do that inside the while loop. If you do it outside the while loop, you'll end up with the same plant object over and over again. So plant DTO plant equals new plant DTO. Okay. And now I'm going to say plant dot set cash ID. And I'm going to say cursor dot get, uh, get int. And then cursor 
dot get column index. And what's our column for our uh, plant ID, our cash ID? It's called cash ID, so we'll pass in the constant cash ID. Once again, it's always handy to use constants in this kind of context. Plant dot set GUID cursor dot get int cursor dot get column index GUID plant dot set genus cursor dot get string cursor dot get column index and then genus. Uh, I need to do this for a few more columns. Uh, for the sake of brevity, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and finish that up. And now you see I have finished uh, each of the attributes of my plant, the cache ID, which is the local unique identifier, the global unique identifier, the genus species cultivar and common name. Now where you see get int, get string, so on and so forth, I could have put the ordinal number of that column in the result set, but the tricky thing is I'm doing select star from plants. It's entirely possible that the table structure will change, and if I put the ordinal column number in there, uh, if I ever change the query or I change the table structure, it's going to be brittle and it will break. Those two are, are too tightly coupled. Instead, if I say cursor.getString and then I dynamically get the column index with cursor.getColumnIndex, it's much more flexible. So after this is all set, uh, what should happen then is uh, it should return all of the plants that are in the database that meet this search criteria. So I will save. One more thing we're going to want to do, and this is easy to forget to do, uh, but we want to say cursor dot move to next. If we don't do that, we'll keep reading the same row over and over again. So let's say move to the next row. Then once we have exceeded beyond the last row, the while, uh, the while test here will return false. We'll close the cursor and we will return our list of plants. One other thing we need to do is take this newly created plant object and add it to the all plants collection that we are returning. So I'm going to say uh, right before that move to next row, I'm going to say all plants dot add plant. Don't forget to do this or you will end up with an empty collection that gets returned. And I say, now I'm going to go back to GPS a plant and let's take a look at uh, what we have here. Uh, we have if count plants is less than a thousand, then we're going to go online and we're going to call fetch plants. The trick is we do not have an else part. What if we say, hey, if it is greater than 1,000, let's go ahead and use local data. That's going to be a lot faster. That's going to be a better user experience. So I'm going to put in else, and then I'm going to simply say all plants equals offline plant DAO dot fetch plants, and then we're going to pass in the search term that we used earlier, uh, which is, let's see, param zero. And this is going to fetch our data from a local data source and terminate with a semicolon. Uh, it's going to be a lot faster because it is fetching our data from that local data source. Now it's telling us unhandled exception. Um, those exceptions honestly aren't truly valid in this circumstance because uh, it's an IO exception and a JSON exception that comes from our interface. Uh, while I usually don't like to do this, I'm going to alt enter, uh, surround with try catch, and I go ahead and leave that blank. I'm going to make it a generic exception uh, and leave that blank, which generally not good practice, but I know that we're not parsing JSON and we're not going online, uh, so we're not going to get these exceptions in an offline scenario. So I'm going to set a breakpoint there. I'm going to start the emulator, and let's see if we're able to pull data from our local data source. I've put breakpoints in a few strategic positions. First on the uh, first line of the do in background, which represents the thread that's running in the background that's collecting our data. Uh, that way we can verify that we're getting to the count plants logic. Next, I put one on the uh, offline uh, plant DAO fetch. The emulator's coming up in the background as I speak. And then finally, one on the on post execute, which is where we update the user interface. So let's watch as these breakpoints get hit. Now you see our app is starting to load and it's waiting to attach to the debugger. 
it has just hit the first breakpoint. I'm going to focus on the IDE F8, F8, F8. And one of the first things we're going to do is query that local database and say, do we have data in that local database? If not, we want to go online. Uh, but if so, we want to use that local data. So we take a look at uh, count plants 3114, and we see that we do indeed have local data. You see also the progress bar has come up. Uh, so I'm going to choose F8, and because we have more than a thousand records, we're going to run to our offline data source. Instead of s stepping through there one line at a time, I'll go ahead and choose F8. We'll see there's going to be a slight delay as we load the records from our offline data source. I press F9 to continue, and we see that it comes to the on post execute. Now, I'm going to mouse over plant DTOs, and let's see how many items we have in this array list. 3,052, that looks about right. Next, it's going to take that entire collection of 3,052 plants and add it to our autocomplete text view. So I'll choose F9 one more time, which says, okay, uh, go ahead and continue to run the, go ahead and continue to run the app. Now, if I go to plant name, I'll search maybe on red. And we know the color is a little bit off, but nonetheless, you see, I get the red buds that I usually get, but I get several other plants as well. So I can go ahead and choose Circus canadensis eastern red bud, and we see that we're able to operate entirely with offline data. So in this lesson, we've seen how to query the database for offline data. And we've also seen how to uh, use that data interchangeably with online data by putting it in a common format, which is a list of plant ETOs. In our next video, we're going to see how to do an online-offline toggle uh, based on this try-catch block that we're currently not using. Thank you.